What's up guys? Thanks for stopping by today. This is a quick tutorial, very beginner friendly for wet felting, what we call our simply striking fire bowl. This is wet felted merino top with lovely viscose fibers to give it that flame look. And we just kept the inside straight black. It's super simple to make. It takes less than one ounce of wool. You can make it in a day and truly you can make it just any color you want. So if you're wanting to learn more about wet felting or wet felting over resist, this is a great starter project and we're going to just jump right into it. For this project, we are using 19 and a half micron merino top in coffee bean. It is a delicious dark brown color and I've divided it into quarter ounce increments. So you're looking at a full two ounces divided into quarter ounce increments and we're only going to use one ounce of wool for this project. For our surface design we are using nothing more than viscose top. I have three colors here that we'll use to create our fireball effect and you can grab the list in the description for the supplies. To set up, we are using what I call my half table setup for wet felting, a grippy mat, a towel for the work surface, and then another towel, this one going up and down for the rolling. This is what I call my rolling towel. Then we'll have our bubble wrap. This is just regular bubble. We sell it under nano felt bubble and a thin plastic sheeting. Then our project will go on top of this. Alternately, we'll be using another sheet of plastic as well as mesh. I have here an 11, I think it's about 11 and a quarter inch circle that's on the supply list. And you'll see that I've marked it above the halfway point. I want my top to be tapered in or a little more narrow. The quarter ounce increments of wool allow you greater control when you're laying out the fiber. So give it a chance and break it down so that it's in these long narrow strips. We are going to do a traditional crisscross layout, so one layer going horizontal and one going vertical. And you'll see that there is a gentle overlap as we tear off each bit, and this is called shingling. We will overlap each piece and then we'll overlap the rolls gently as well. If you're brand new, this is the part not to rush, and whether you're new or experienced, I encourage you to try and tear off your fiber into these very narrow strips because the control it gives you is going to help you get better at creating thin, even layers. And the layout is incredibly important when we're wet felting. You'll have a better result if you do multiple thin layers than if you just do like two big thick layers. So you'll notice that I take my time. I pat the fibers down as I go to flatten them, but I'm also feeling for bare spots and I'm always looking for bare spots. So at times I'll go back and just fill in a little area that seems a little too thin. If you have any challenges with getting a thin even layout, remember to do this part and that's to pat everything down and especially important to do before you wet out a single layer. That's the time to catch bare spots. So you'll see here that I'm kind of radiating the last row in towards the center and on the opposite side I do it straight across. Honestly you could do it either way. We're going to get a good crisscross because we're going to do multiple layers. Now this layer we're going to go straight up and down. So again we're going over the edge just about an inch and we're stopping as flush as possible to that top row that we created. This is going to be the top of our vessel and we're going to leave it organic for this project um, and not try and control it too much. This is really good for a beginner project. It's kind of free and it's a great opportunity to practice doing thin even layers. It's great practice for wet felting with fine fibers like merino top. It'd be fun to experiment doing the surface design with just viscose and learning to work with that fiber and seeing how you like it. And then also we are working with an open resist. We do have another wet felting over resist tutorial online and um, even our wrist warmers, those are both a closed resist. This is an open resist, meaning we don't encase the resist material completely in the fiber. So helpful to go a little above the halfway point that will allow our project to snug onto the resist and help prevent the layers from flaring out as we felt them. 
Now it's time to wet out and I like to put my mesh in place. This is just a personal preference. I've always wet felted with mesh and it allows me to control the water going in and to feel how much water and soap is in the project. So I like to wet out with a sponge initially. I load the sponge with water and soap and then we're gonna press water and soap in and air out. Water and soap in and air out. And this helps me really control where the water goes and how much water goes in. So I'm not blotting water out. I'm pressing water through the fiber. Now that might vary depending on the thickness of the project or the type of project I'm doing, but this really is a standard for me. Then we press. Again, we're just flattening the fiber down. We are pressing water and soap in and I'm not rubbing at this point at all. Just press it down and get it all nice and flat. When you peel back your mesh, peel it at a very shallow angle so that the fiber doesn't stick to it. Then we're gonna put our plastic in place so that we can flip it over and do side two. We'll go a little faster on side two, just so you don't have to sit through it. But notice that I'm not overly smearing my wool out. I don't want to move those fibers underneath. I want them all to stay in place. Now I'm gonna show you a few different ways to bring your fiber around the other side. This first time we're going to use our fingers once we get it started with the plastic to guide the fiber around onto the resist. And this is an important part, especially if you're new. You want to take your time, and I'll get my head out of the way here in just a second. Take your time and make sure that the fibers are snug against the resist. If they squish off, that's when we get what we call a seam, which is basically like a little ridge because the fiber has scooted off the resist and felt it to itself. And that is what we don't want to have happen. So take your time here and get everybody nice and snug up against the resist. Now for side two, we're gonna do the same layout and we are going to overlap the edges again so that they wrap around to the other side because we're going to do this same step a couple of times. Here we go again. Dry your hands really well at this point. It's easy to kind of rush and I know my hands were a little tacky from the soap. Our olive oil soap is very tacky um, and that's what we use is our imported olive oil soap. It's from France. It's got a very high vegetable oil content and it really helps make the project stick together. The pH also helps open the fibers so that they are more readily receive the water, which is really helpful, and just kind of holds everything together. So dry your hands really well and take your time on this layout. It, I spent, you know, five minutes for each of these little layouts because I'm kind of a slow layouter. <laughs> I just take my time and watch. So here we go again, the same wet felting process, flatten everything out, and then we're going to um, bring the fiber around to the other side. So again with our plastic and flippy over. Now I'm gonna show you how to use the plastic to bring the fiber in. Notice it's sticking because the plastic is wet now and you can use the plastic to help guide all that fiber back over to the middle and onto the resist. It's pretty fun. And then you'll just go and get any little wrinkles out or see how the fibers trailed up. Just straighten them out and get them to go where you want. But it's a real quick way to do it and then just go around and nudge everything right up to the resist. So now we're doing one more set of crisscross layers and you'll notice that this one is trailing off the edge just about as much as we did on the first. So this one I'm gonna to allow to wrap all the way around to the other side, just like we did in the first two layers. You actually need very little water at this point because the uh, layer underneath is pretty wet. Um, so don't overwater it. You don't want your fiber sitting in a big puddle. Now, this is our last wool layer, and what I wanna point out is that my fibers are barely extending over to the other side. I'm fine if they wrap around the edge just a tiny bit. I will scoop all of those up and make sure that I get them. If they stick over at all, just make sure that you capture them in a wrap around and don't start rubbing while they're sticking off, because then it'll be obvious. But you can see now what we're doing is fully encasing our vessel 
in or our resist in just the wool before putting on our design layer. When you first start wet felting, can maybe can rush getting into the design layer and then you get into problems in the overlap, whether you're making a hat or a purse or a bowl or a pillowcase, whatever. So just take your time and make sure that you get a nice base layer to design on and get all of your wool wrapped up to the top. Now comes our viscose. Really, this is designed to be a super easy introduction way just to working with these luxury fibers. This is um, viscose in red, and I'll, I'll name all the colors in the, uh, in the supply list, but all we're doing is just radiating it out across the bottom of the vessel. Now you could make it a little bit thicker if you wanted, but I wanted some of the brown to show through and not for it not to be 100% solid. I wanted a little bit of that contrast. So we started with the darkest color and then we went to the medium color and then the yellow. Now I thought when I originally made this that I was going to trim the top of the vessel and then I decided not to because I liked the yellow just tapering off. So this is you know, less of a lesson in design and more of an introductory project that just anyone can do and you can do with just any color you want. So the one thing I'll point out that you may have noticed is that I didn't add any water at this point. I only used the water down below. And then again on side two, we're not trying to overlap the layers. Now my hands are pretty sticky and this viscose will kind of stick to you, but it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. We want it to be a little bit squiggly and a little bit fun. So this laying it out even in these straight lengths is just an option. You could also lay it out all squiggly and like in little clouds. But notice we didn't add water, we used the water that's in the project, and this tends to want to stick to the mesh a little bit more. Um, and just take your time when you peel off your mesh, and now get all of the fibers hugging close to the resist. So you'll see that we were really taking our time at each stage of the project to make sure that our fibers were hugging. We wet the outside of the plastic like this. You can add soap to your hands and water to your hands, but you wet the outside so that you can rub the plastic without it sticking. If felting through plastic is new for you or it seems kind of icky, sometimes it's just that you don't have enough water on the outside, your hands should glide. And at this moment, the only thing I'm doing is just getting coaxing all of those fibers towards the resist. Coax, coax, coax so that they're hugging the resist we are going to wet felt this vessel using the rolling method and I only spend a couple of minutes here just coaxing everything in. When we mash and we wet the wool out, as we press on it, the wool is gonna go out from the area where you're pressing and we wanna make sure that we get everything hugging really close to that resist before we roll. I will be rolling initially with a pool noodle the pool noodle goes on top of the plastic and we roll up the bubble wrap and the plastic and the project and then we roll the whole thing in the towel, just the rolling towel that was laying on top. And I'll show you how I do a little rock and roll and then we'll blaze through this. I count to 25 doing these little rock and rolls and then I'm going to give the project a quarter turn on its axis so that a different part of the project is touching the table. There we go, that's my turn. We're gonna do that four times. So we do four sets of 25 in this rock and roll fashion, and then we're gonna roll from another edge. So 100 rolls in sets of 25 in this rock and roll fashion. Now, what you'll see, what's different from this as opposed to other projects is that I switched to the opposite side. I did side to side, side to side, on top and bottom. Then I rolled it from the bottom. So we usually always say to roll it from each side an even number of times, but in this project, I was favoring shrinking from side to side first. So all we do is the 100 rolls from each side, flip the project over, 100 rolls from each side, flip the project over, then I rolled from top to bottom, bottom to top, and then top to bottom. Then I rolled with my closet pole from three more edges until you get this buckling. See how the project is buckling on the resist and it's starting to shrink? 
that's when you know you have enough shrinkage to be at the soft felt stage because the project is shrinking smaller than your resist. You see how I can handle it and it comes up as one fabric? That's when you know it's time to come off and now it's time for more felting and then fulling. Fulling is further shrinking. I consider this a soft felt stage. It's not felted yet. And so we want to keep felting it and felting it is going to be in the same fashion. But the first thing you want to do is sort of tackle those edges so that you untrain them. That's what you see. I'm rubbing along the edges that were on the edge of the resist and there's not a seam there. They just get trained into that little sharp peak. So take time to rub those and massage them out. And then we're going to keep rolling and hand massaging this piece to further felt it. You want to be delicate with it at this stage because all the fibers have plenty of room to continue to migrate to each other. So we want to keep your hands wet and keep your hands soapy and you shouldn't feel the fibers getting roughed up underneath your touch. Everything should, that you rub should just feel like you're just coaxing those fibers closer and closer together. This is a great project to just really learn how wool feels when it's felted. And especially if you start with something fine, like a 19, 19 and a half micron, you'll feel what, you'll get there fast. And that's really satisfactory, <laughs> satisfactory, satisfying. That's really satisfying and is a quick way to learn what something feels like when it's felted. If you start with a more coarse fiber, sometimes you can feel like you should be there and therefore you wanna stop. Start with fine fibers, especially in the beginning, and see how satisfying they are to work with and how readily they felt up. It'll help you learn a lot. And um, for this project, we're going for approximately 40% shrinkage. So we're going to keep felting this and then later fulling it until we start to get close to that shrinkage. And that's because I know that I can get it to shrink that much. So now I'm shrinking a little more from the bottom. Rolling from the all the sides, edges in the beginning was because I wanted to favor the shrinkage in that direction. So that meant like if the wool is going to shrink 40%, I wanted to get it to shrink in those directions first. I just wanted this vessel to be a little more narrow than squatty. And that's why I did it that way. If you don't want your vessel to be as narrow as mine, well then you could just roll from you know side, bottom, side top and just treat all four directions if you will evenly and now all i'm really doing is continuing to felt i'm still rolling on my bubble wrap with each roll and unroll i'm feeling how the fiber feels and the more you roll it you can feel it coming together this entire time my water has been fairly just room temperature and now I've traded out for my super bubble, which is a little more aggressive. It's, it's not really aggressive at itself, but you get a little more resistance. So it's a little more satisfying to use as a rolling a surface that you roll on versus you roll up. Rolling in the bubble is very gentle and rolling on the regular bubble is very gentle. And then rolling on the super bubble gives you a nice surface to push against. Notice I'm still favoring the sides and rolling the top because I want my vessel to be a little more tall. It's more the shape that I'm going for than anything at this point. Now I'm doing what I call wadding. We're really at the fulling stage now. We're going to start shrinking this and then I'm going to throw it. Wadding and throwing is when you you're willing to give up a little control of how something shrinks. If you want something to shrink in a really uniform fashion, then don't do the wadding and throwing. But if you want to kind of zing it a little bit and get a little bit of crimp back into that fiber, then throwing and wadding can be a good result. And um, like I said, you kind of give up a little bit control and I wanted this to be slightly organic at the top, not overly extreme in any particular shape. So I permitted myself to do this. Now I'm plunging it in hot water and this is really the fulling stage. So now we have a good felt, I'm able to handle it, I can feel the fibers all condensed together. But fulling is, the fur is further shrinking. So really, fulling can take different forms, but mostly you're doing the same actions that you were. 
Fulling is the stage after you have felt. So notice again, I'm still favoring the narrowness, you know, felting from the sides as opposed to doing it the same amount from top and bottom. That's really my goal, a little more tall. And I'm turning it inside and out. You want to felt both sides, especially if you have a particularly thick project. You'll notice when you first take it off the resist that the inside is felted less. So make sure that your insides and outsides are felted. And we're getting pretty close on this project now. We've shrunk it down quite well. I'm very satisfied with it. And now I've rinsed all of the soap and water out. I just use regular temperature. A splash of vinegar now in room temperature water and we're going to submerge this thing for 15 minutes. I do this while I clean up my project area. Submerge it for 15 minutes. This is going to help cut any soap that may be residual and also bring the fiber back to its acidic state which is where it prefers to be and that's going to just help bring back the natural characteristics of your wool. That includes sheen, that includes softness. For this project, I'm just rolling it in a towel. I don't spin it out. I often use my spin dryer, um, but I don't want all of the water out. I want it to sit overnight a little bit damp because we're going to shape it right now. As I mentioned, this is just super simple. You know, you could shape it over a bowl or a vase or something if you want in the, in the felting and the fulling stage as you get towards the end, but this one is just a quick shaping with a balloon and it can make a piece look very elegant. So this will help puff out all of the areas of the fiber and keep them from wrinkling in on themselves. And this project I'm not going to steam press. If you felt it with me a little bit, you often see me steam press my finished project. This one I'm not going to steam press. I'm just going to leave it sit like this, except I'm going to shape a little rim along the bottom so that it has a little foot, if you will. So just press the fiber in so that it starts to cave in on the bottom a little bit. And you see now I'm just sort of looking for what's the natural bottom. And then I'm gonna go around and pinch the fiber, scooting it off the balloon a little bit so that I create just a little tiny rim. And you can see it here now, I'm gonna turn it sideways. I didn't do anything more than this. It's not treated with anything. It's still very soft and it's very damp. And just let it sit overnight. All of the sheen in your viscose is gonna come the next day. So just let it sit and let it dry with the balloon inside of it. There you go, you did it. That's all for this time, guys. Thank you so much for felting with us. We hope that you have fun wet felting your vessel. Be sure to check out our group, Living Felt Friends, on Facebook. You can shop with us as well and check out our live show, Wooly Wednesdays, Wednesdays at 2 o'clock Central. And you can visit our website for our full schedule, but we go live almost every week of the year. We'll see you next time, and we hope you have fun wet felting your vessel. Thanks, guys. Bye.